Hi, I'm James McNeish. I'm the Connections Design Manager in Scotland for the South Caledonian region. And I'm going to sort of talk you through some of the design process and the challenges of uh, heat when we're designing the network. So the, the way we've always designed the network, we've designed it under two scenarios. Uh, one scenario being the summer uh, load and one being the winter load. Winter tends to be higher compared to the summer and the difference in that being uh, the heating uh, being used, uh, heating used in the winter uh, compared to the summer. And heating is sort of the main load when we're assessing the network as well, because we don't assess things like cook cookers and showers uh, on the network because they're only on for short durations. Uh, we assess the likes of lights and sockets and have a, have a load for that. Uh, but the biggest load for domestically is uh, the heating. Uh, each, you know, saying that each uh, property, you know, will still get 100 amps supply, 23 kVA. Uh, however, we don't model the networks at 23 kVA. We look to model a diversified uh, maximum demand and after diversity maximum demand on the network. So think about diversity for a second. I always like to use the example of 10 sockets in a house. Uh, each capable of 13 amps, um, which totaling that up uh, should be capable of 130 amps on the circuit. However, the circuit's designed around about 30 amps. It's designed a lot less. And the reason for that is we assume that not every socket's going to pull 13 amps at the same time and not every socket's going to be on at the same time. So you can take diversity into account and design a lot less. And we look to design the electricity network exactly the same way. So looking at the traditional loads that we've had on the network, traditionally there's always been two loads uh, that we would uh, typically assess. One of them being uh, a non-electric uh, load of 2.25 kVA and one of them being an electric load of uh, uh, 12 kVA. So looking at the electric load, uh, the example I've sort of given there is if you had 20 customers, the total load from the site would be 36 kVA. So if you take a non-diversified load of the, just adding all them up, you would actually get 50 kVA. So you can see how that's a little bit less. And it becomes more evident when you go, uh, when you have more load. So uh, example there of uh, the electric load and uh, 20 customers, we get 174 kVA. Whereas undiversified, that would be 240. Um, you know, it, it's worth sort of mentioning as, as well, you know, if, if we keep assessing the loads as 12 kVA, eventually uh, things are going to break on the network. Uh, and the, the bottom example there is just adding the electric load of 12 kVA. So if it's electrically heated uh, and seven kilowatts uh, EV uh, with a seven kilowatt EV charger, uh, we're up at 233 kVA. So you can quickly see how the loads are uh, increasing. So the, the, the heat and load has a, has a big impact on um, the network and it's, it's got a big impact on us uh, achieving net, net zero uh, and the power consumed in the home you know uh, everything's becoming more efficient everything's developing with the technologies and we need to sort of uh, you know, uh, carry, carry on uh, developing what we do and how we assess the networks as well so the change in technologies with the heating and decarbonizing the heat you know we've, i'm going to sort of talk through some of the air source heat pumps and ground source heat pumps uh, touch on the uh, combine, combined heat and power and uh, the communal heating schemes. So if you look at the heat pump uh, process, uh, the ENA has developed some very good uh, processes and they continue to develop good processes for, for heat pumps. Uh, and there's actually a process where you can connect and notify as long as your installation meets the criteria. Uh, it doesn't have um, and it, you know, as long as the cutouts uh, and the fuse is the right size, as long as the site demand is uh, quite low, and as long as the heat pump is actually falls under the connect and notify process. Uh, this this actually means there won't be any network studies and there's no work to do. You just connect it and uh, notify us that you've connected it. But if if a supply is a single supply I, I, that uh, does require it because it doesn't meet the, the standards uh, or um, say it's a new supply, then you'll need to come in and, uh, and ask us for this. Uh, and when we're looking at the heat pumps, um, it's very common that we get um, given a, a, like a 15 kilowatt um, of, 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 of power uh, or a 15 kilowatt heat pump. And quite often that's referring to the output heat of the heat pump. The input power that we're uh, concerned about for designing the network is usually a lot less, usually so, uh, three, four, or five kva around about those sort of figures 
So with that being smaller, we, we, we can adapt our network study. So rather than jumping up to 12 kVA, we can drop it down a, a lot further. So the example of uh, 3 kVA uh, heat pump would give us 5.2 kVA with the traditional load added to that. Uh, what we've also done is we've uh, developed and we've uh, added in a heat pump profile uh, into our modeling software, which you can see at the top right hand corner of the slide, hopefully, uh, that, um, you know, the profile and that profile has come straight out of ENA's documents P P5. Uh, the next two graphs are just sort of demonstrating the, the actual um, diversity that this then produces over the, over the network, uh, depending on the number of customers and things. So you can start to see the grey lines are the non-diversified lines, and you can see on the bottom graph how how much of a difference that could potentially you know diversity makes there. So with with heat pumps, um, you know uh, we're we're looking at, at heat pumps and we're looking to assess them, and we want to make sure to find out if they're an abnormal load or not. Uh, and part of that uh, assessment, you know, we, we look at the ENA's database uh, or we're looking for a certificate of conformity. And what we're looking for is we're looking for harmonics and uh, flicker standards. Uh, so for voltage fluctuation, which is the flicker on the network for it, so like if a motor starting, uh, we're looking that the heat pump um, meets the technical requirements of EN 6100 uh, 3 3. Uh, and for harmonics, there's a uh, two standards. It's either 3-2 or 3-12, uh, and that's what we're looking for in the certificate conformity, or we're looking for it in the ENA database. The ENA database is a very good source for that, but not every heat pump is there uh, as uh, at the moment. Um, it, it takes somebody to go an installer going to give them the the details for that. Uh, if if we don't know if it's going to meet those technical requirements. Um, we can assess the motor based on the starting current, or we can assess the motor based uh, on uh, and provide you limits for for the for the network as far as the motor starting uh, for, for uh, within the network. So moving on, uh, we have uh, the combined uh, heat and power. Uh, of the uh, uh, heating system, um, uh, CHP for for short, and and these can be it can be large scale, they can be small scale uh, uh, as far as these goes, um, but uh, you know we would assess the load as as another connection effectively, if that's that's how it sort of come in. If it goes behind a connection, it goes it can go behind a connection as well. Um, one thing that uh, with uh, CHP units is they can export to the grid, so we need to be clear if if that's going to export to the grid or if it's not connected to the grid for the power generation side. Um, if it is exporting to the grid, that can present a few issues here and there with um, the fact that a lot of our network is is constrained uh, and can can be constrained in areas for a considerable amount of time, which can affect your connection. And it may be worthwhile considering an export limitation system under G100. Uh, just like um, the heat pumps as well, we can assess the starting currents for, for these and provide you limits if you don't have the start, don't provide us with the starting currents. So looking at uh, communal heating, uh, communal heating, um, uh, we have sort of seen a few of these uh, being looked at on the network. Uh, I've seen some CHPs, I've also seen some heat pumps. Uh, coming into the network, and we would assess that basically as as a, an additional connection because a lot of the time that is what what it is. But once again, it could be behind one uh, connection, uh, which we would assess that as one connection. So the likes of uh, heat pumps and things, um, you know, the potential and real risk of the, if the issue is there's a, a you know it can create quite a large uh, starting currents because a lot of the time when it's communal, it could be a lot larger than this and then a smaller one. Uh, so that could create uh, flicker issues uh, on the network and, and could create issues on the starting currents uh, for, for the motor, which might mean that we've got to move a substation or transformer closer to the motor. And it's always worth getting in touch with us to sort of discuss uh, that because we can provide you the limits. But uh, once again, um, you know, we need to make sure that actually it's not going to affect the network uh, and uh, not going to cause any issues uh, on, on startup. Uh, so I would always encourage you there to, to get in touch with, the, with us if you're looking at the communal uh, heat pump or uh, CHP sort of unit type thing there to see what's the best solution is going to be. 
Uh, one thing to also consider with uh, communal heating uh, systems is to consider the, the earthen uh, because we don't want uh, cross bonding uh, between uh, connections uh, for the electricity supply so, uh, and, and we need to make sure that that's all safe uh, for uh, as well. So uh, that's a, a consideration there. Looking at sort of commercial supplies, uh, commercial supplies would always encourage you to get a, an electrician or somebody on board that can help you determine the load. Um, because anything below 69 kVA, uh, you know, as so long as you want either, uh, if you want a three-phase three, three phase supply, we could provide that three-phase supply fine. But as soon as you go above 69 kVA, then you're signing up to a maximum demand. and we can't really tell you what that maximum demand is uh, because that's what you, you're agreeing to sign up to uh, and, and that's what we will study the network for. So it's important that you get that maximum demand right because it's going to have a big effect on your costs, not just initially but also uh, as you're paying your uh, bills and uh, for, for the electricity supply as well because it'll be non-half hour metered. Um, we can assess uh, commercial loads on the, on the network as we assess existing loads. Uh, anything below 69 kVA, we assess with a watts per meter squared. Uh, so the example that I've got there on the screen um, is basically our Dundee depot office, and actually that comes out uh, with a watts per meter squared uh, just under 85 kVA. However, what that's not taken into account is the fact that there's uh, four, uh, at least four EV chargers out the front of uh, the, our Dundee office. Uh, so it's not taking the likes of that into account. And, and th that's the issue with uh, a lot of uh, commercial supplies for us is um, we need people to, to actually determine what the maximum demand from the site is uh, to, to, to sign up to the connection agreement. Or if it's below 69 kVA, um, be making sure that you, it will be well below that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll also assess loads uh, depending on what, what the usage is uh, as well. So every usage will have a slightly different watts per meter squared and, and buildings can change usage, usage as well. Uh, so that's why I would also encourage you to get somebody on board to help you there. So just to summarize, uh, the way we're sort of heating our homes uh, now is uh, changing and it's evolving with, with, with time. Technologies are, are getting better and the technology is changing and it's becoming more efficient. Uh, the way we are sort of assessing our networks, we've cha changed uh, the way we're assessing the networks with um, heat pumps, for for instance, uh, to become more in line with actually what's what's actually happening out, out there, uh, as far as all, all of that goes. And and heating is probably going to remain one of the largest loads uh, on on the network uh, domestically, um, even though uh, EVs are coming in. I think the uh, heating is probably still going to be one of the larger loads. Uh, so we need to, to evolve and we need to uh, keep up with the technology and keep up with uh, how things are changing uh, as, as it changes over time. So what sort of things do we need for you? Uh, you know, we need to help to determine what your uh, diversified load for the site is um, and providing as much information as possible. The main thing, you know, we can help with that um as far as that that goes uh, but we can you know the main thing that we need to know from you is what heating type you're going to have and providing us with as much information there as possible so if it's a heat pump providing us with the heat pump details of the make at least the make and model number uh, and we can find information out from there because it makes a big effect on on the study it makes a big effect on uh, what we do if we assess things with the traditional electric load uh, then that's going to be a big difference compared to if you've got a very efficient heat pump uh, that could uh, really affect the price of the, of the site and the actual overall design of the site. If you've got a, a, a single supply above 69 kVA where it'll be a maximum demand, make sure you know what the maximum demand is going to be because that's going to affect uh, what we'll study the network for and also it'll affect what you sign up to as well. Uh, and if you want to talk about any applications or uh, walk through any applications, then uh, you know engage with us uh, and get in touch with us. We're always happy. We're always here to help where, where we can. Uh, and it's better to engage early prior to making the application than uh, once you've received your quotation.